Hello, my friends and artists. Today, we're going to dive deep into value, an element of art that means how light or dark the colors are in an artwork. We're going to use value to create the illusion of depth. And we're also going to have actual real depth in this project by creating layers of a landscape inside of a shadow box. For each layer of our landscape, we're going to use a different tint or shade of one color. So our piece is going to be monochromatic or many different values of one color. Sometimes when you're trying to create the illusion of depth, you make everything darker and darker and darker as the objects in your image are supposed to be farther and farther away. But we are going to be dealing with something called atmospheric perspective. And with atmospheric perspective, it usually happens in a landscape where the further the objects are from you, the lighter they become. And this is because we're looking through a bunch of air, like literal air particles. And so the further objects are away from us, they actually appear to be lighter in color because of all the air particles in the way. Now that we've got all our vocabulary and the background information for this project, we're going to start painting. What you will be receiving are six white squares of paper that are exactly the same size as the backing of our shadow box. Make sure that you keep track of your backing of your shadow box and your six pieces of paper by writing your name on the white tag on the back of your board, the back of your shadow box, and then pick up a pencil and write your name on every single paper. There are six papers, you need your name on all six. Once those seven pieces uh, have your name on them, it's time to choose which color you're gonna go with for your landscape. Remember, this is a monochromatic piece. So you are going to choose one color, and then from there, you're going to mix tints and shades of that one color. You can choose a primary color, or you can mix up your own secondary or tertiary colors to work with. The only paint that will be available to you are the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, black for mis mixing shades, and white for mixing tints of your color. Now this is a fair warning. If you are going to go with a secondary or tertiary color, you need to remember the amounts of each primary color that you use just in case you run out of it, right? So I am going to make the secondary color of orange. I'm going to add red to yellow slowly, little by little, until it hits the proper orange that I'm looking for. And I need to pay attention so that if I need to make more of this secondary color, I know how to. And remember, whenever we mix colors, you always need to add the darker color into the lighter color. That way you have more control over it and then you can actually change the color. If you added the lighter color to the darker color, it would take way too much time and way too much paint to affect the darker color with the lighter. That's why that's a huge rule for this project. You always add the darker color to the lighter. Once you have your color ready to go, whether you just chose to go with a primary color or mix a secondary color. Now you need to begin by painting the wooden backboard of your shadow box. And this is going to be the furthest plane of your landscape. It's going to be basically the sky in the background. And following the rules of atmospheric perspective, since the sky, is the furthest thing back, it's going to be the lightest plane of the whole painting. So you are going to take a scoop of your color, whatever it is, and you are going to mix it into your pile of white paint. It is going to create a very light tint of your color. It's going to be the lightest color of this whole thing. And once you've got a really light tint, 
you need to paint and cover the entire backboard of your shadow box. Make sure that you don't leave any brush strokes behind. Make sure it is very smooth and very opaque. Once it's done, what we need to do is grab a piece of paper for our second plane, the next closest piece of our landscape to us. And compared to the board, it needs to be slightly darker on the value scale. So what I need to do is mix my color with white. I'm still making tints, but this one needs to be darker. So I'm gonna leave my board right above my painting so that I can easily see and compare whether or not this square is in fact darker in value than the previous board. And once I've got the proper tint mixed up and ready to go, I'm going to cover this paper with the tint from top to bottom and side to side. No peekaboo spots, no brush strokes, really nice and smooth. My paper square is looking pretty much perfect if I do say so myself. It is just slightly darker than my board and so now I can put my board into the drying rack, scooch my most recent painting up above my work area and start to mix an even darker tint of my orange color. And again, I'm adding more of my color to the pile of white to make it darker than it was previously. And once I've got it, I'm going to paint this square all the way from top to bottom, side to side with my new tint. Now that square is done so we can put the old square into the drying rack to be ready for cutting and drawing and use this square to compare. Now it's up to you when you decide to just use your color, right? For this square, I decided that I am going to use the straight up orange that I mixed. I'm not going to mix it with white anymore. I'm just going to use it straight up. This will be my fourth layer or my fourth plane in my landscape and so I think it's right about in the middle, which is just about perfect. So I'm going to use my straight up orange color to paint square number four. Now that I've used my straight up color, it's time to go darker than my color. So that means that I need to switch gears from mixing tints to mixing shades. Now here's the thing we need to remember. Remember the rule that when you are mixing paint, you need to add the darker color to the lighter color. And the darker color could be black to make a really dark shade, or if you are making a secondary or tertiary color painting, you could also just add more of the darker color in the secondary or tertiary color. So for example, I made orange, right? A secondary color. And orange is made with red and yellow. So for this square, instead of adding black to my mixture to make a shade, I'm going to add more of the darker color in orange, which is red. So I added a little bit more red into my orange and it actually made a darker shade of orange. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover my next square from top to bottom and side to side with it. Once that square is done, I just have two more to go. And again, I'm trying to get darker and darker each time. I'm moving into shade territory. And this time, I'm going to use black paint to make a darker shade of my orange. Just watch out for the black paint. It is very potent, very powerful. So just a little bit of it goes a long way. As you can see, immediately once I add it, black, it really darkened my orange and it made it uh, kind of brownish and that's okay. That's how the color reacted to the black. Nothing's wrong. It just changed shades. And once I've got my darker shade, of course, I'm going to paint the next square and then I'm going to mix up another shade of orange that's even darker than the last and it's going to be my darkest and then I'm finally done. 
after you have painted seven different planes to work with and they all have increasingly darker and darker values to create that atmospheric perspective and the illusion of depth, then you're ready to make a decision on what your landscape is actually going to be. You can use any landscape as your inspiration. I'm going to use this photograph that I took in South America of the amazing ruins of Machu Picchu. And I'm gonna look at this landscape and in my mind, I'm gonna be splitting it into different planes. We are going to try to split our landscape into seven planes so that we can use all the different papers that we painted with different values. It might help you to visualize this process by taking a look at this photo of Machu Picchu. Each of the lines designates a new plane. So we have the sky in the background, that's one. Then there's a mountain range in front of that. That's the, where the red line is showing. Then we've got Huayna Picchu, the mountain in Machu Picchu, designated with the orange line. That's plane number three. Getting closer, designated by the yellow line, we've got plane number four. Plane five is cordoned off with green. And then we got a teeny tiny sixth plane outlined in blue and a seventh final plane outlined in purple. So you're going to need to do that with your landscape idea as well. Make sure you have a good plan and that you've thought out where each of the parts of your landscape are going to land. And once you're ready, it's time to draw and cut each of your planes to match the landscape that you're trying to go for. So my very back plane is the sky and I'm just going to leave it blank. I'm not going to add clouds or anything like that, although you can do that. I'm going to move to plane number two and in my landscape, plane number two is this really tall mountain range. So I'm going to draw a line going across my plane that matches as close as I could get it to that mountain range. Once it's drawn with a pencil, take a Sharpie, either fine point or ultra fine point, depending on what you're using it for, and trace the line. Now this could be buildings, this could be trees, it might be different than mine, but it's the same idea. You're going to draw a line that shows what the plane is, mountains, trees, buildings, whatever, then trace it with Sharpie, and then grab some scissors and cut along that line. Once the line is cut, then you have your plane. So right now I actually have two planes. I've got the sky way in the background, plane one. And then plane number two is going to be that mountain range from my landscape. And it's going to look like it's in front of the sky because it really is and also because it's a darker value. Before we move on to plane number three, we are actually going to glue the planes together with a little bit of space in between, actual depth in between the planes. And we are going to use tiny little pieces of cardboard to do that. So take the back of the plane that you're going to attach and you are going to glue on five little pieces of cardboard. You're going to try to glue four around the corners of your plane and then one in the center. And this is going to give the picture a pop out effect. It's going to be awesome. But the thing you don't want to do is let any of the cardboard be seen from the front. So you want to tuck the cardboard in behind the paper so that it can't be seen. Once you've got five little pieces of cardboard distributed evenly around your plane, put another dot of glue on each one and attach the plane to the previous plane. You're going to want to match up the bottom corners and edges so that everything lines up nicely and press down on your project gently to give the glue some grab time. In my landscape, the third plane is this big mountain that is a really big characteristic of Machu Picchu and that scene. And so I'm going to get my next darkest plane and I'm going to draw a line that matches the mountain. I'm going to trace that with Sharpie and cut it out. 
Then I'm going to attach the cardboard to the back and then I'm going to lay it onto the rest of the project as my third plane. And I'm going to continue this process over and over until I've used up all of my landscape planes. Notice I'm using a Sharpie in order to add further details to each plane. So for me, it's these step structures that are part of Machu Picchu. For you, it might be windows on buildings. It might be leaves on trees. It might be birds flying in the air. Whatever details you'd like to add, you can do that, but draw it with a pencil first and trace it with a Sharpie next. Once you've finished all the planes of your landscape, you should have something that kind of looks like this. It has real depth and dimension in between each plane, which is also enhanced by the fact that we used different values as well. Now what we need to do is put it all together into the shadow box, but there's one little problem. Our landscapes are not going to fit absolutely perfectly into this shadow box. So we need to change the shadow box just a little bit so that our landscape doesn't get pressed and squished up against the glass and get rid of all the depth and dimension that we created. So what we're going to do is put little pieces of cardboard on each of the four sides of this shadow box. So we will have our black frame with the glass setting inside and then on each of the four sides of this thing we're going to glue very skinny, very thin pieces of cardboard that won't be able to be seen from the front. Make sure that you glue down these pieces of cardboard to the glass so that it doesn't shift around while it's being displayed and unfortunately one layer of cardboard isn't going to be enough to fill up all the space in this shadow box. So we're going to keep piling on these little pieces of cardboard along the sides in little stacks until our shadow box fits perfectly inside where it's not being smushed against the glass but it's also um, not wiggling around and too loose. The winning number for me was a stack of four baby pieces of cardboard and that made my shadow box fit inside perfectly. It might work out a little bit differently for you, so every time you place a layer of cardboard down, put your shadow box into the frame to see if the backing of the shadow box is matched up really nicely with the back of the frame. So here you see I put two pieces of cardboard in there and it's still too deep inside of the frame. So I needed to add two more pieces of cardboard and then as soon as I did that, everything fit together really nicely. Once your backboard of your shadow box is flush or even with the back of the frame, it's time to take the metal prongs on the back of the frame and bend them down to clasp your shadow box closed. And that concludes our shadow box project. I'm so excited to see what you do. See you later.